Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. This game has been a while in the making. A very long while. <laughs> I think the first time Sam played it was over a year ago. Last year at Origins. <laughs> but finally, finally, it's out. Mage Wars. And we're happy to present to you the very first review, I think, maybe. of the game. Maybe. Probably. What Mage Wars is, it's a game. It's a <laughs> customizable strategy game of dueling mages. Well, I was going to say that it was a... Some mages have warfare, but it's not so much about wars. It's like you put two mages in an arena and they fight one another. This is not a new concept. We first saw it in the game Magic the Gathering and Summoner Wars and so on. But is this game the same as them or different? Let's see. Each player is going to choose one of these mages. In this set, we have the Warlock, the Wizard, the Priestess, and the Beastmaster. Now, each of these, there will be more of them, but uh, they have different stats. You can see one of them is a card, and that card is going to be placed, this card here will be placed on the board, and that will act as your mage who's running around. But then they have a stat card that you'll place in front of you. So let's take a look here at a couple of the stat cards. Here's the Wizard and the Warlock to compare. Now, the top four stats are important. The first one's 120. That is the same for all four. That's how many points you have to build your spell deck. Then after that, you see you have your uh, life points, and you can see that the Warlock starts with 38, while the Wizard only starts with 32. And then you have a, a shield amount. None of them have any natural shield. And then a, a channeling number, and you can see that the Warlock channels 9, and the Wizard channels 10. You then see that they have uh, basically training in a specific type. So you can see here that the, the Wizard uh, can use arcane cards, that's the, that's the type that he's trained in, and he can also pick one other choice, fire, earth, air, or water. While over here, he can use dark and fire. While the, if we would look over at the priestess, we see that she uses light, and that the beastmaster likes using nature school. And those are, that's when you're building your spell book. And then there's special abilities that everybody has, and then at the very bottom, they also have some attacks that they can perform as they are uh, going. So for example here the wizard has a little attack that he can do, an arcane zap, and then he has a basic melee attack that he can use in combat. And so this is the first thing you'll be doing is you'll be picking one of these summoners. After that you're going to build a deck of cards. And so for example here's a deck of cards that I've built for one of the mages. This one happens to be the wizard mage. And in it are all different cards. And when I'm building this, I'm going to look at this number up here, which is the spell level. And if that the spell type matches one of the types on my mage, then that level counts as, for example, the card that I was showing you was a level 1. And so the, this wizard here, since that is an arcane card, can put that in his deck for one point. He has 120, so that leaves him with 119 more. And also, for example, here this poison gas cloud. Uh, let's focus up on these a little bit more. You can see that that has a spell level of two, and it is lightning. So that one also cost me two. But then I also put in this Rouse the Beast card. Now that's a nature spell, a level one, but since it's not the one that I was, that's not one of my schools of magic, I can still put that in my deck, but now it costs two instead of one. And sometimes, for example, like the priestess, if she does something that's totally opposite of what she would put in her deck, it would cost even more than that. It would cost triple to put in your deck. But you're going to build a deck, and it doesn't matter how many cards are in your deck, uh, what matters is how many points all the levels are added together. Once you are done doing that, you're going to put your deck in a book. Here we have an example of a spell book. And in this spell book, you can see it comes with little sheets of cards. And as I'm flipping the pages, you can see all the spells that this mage is going to be able to use over the course of the game. Now you can pretty much sort them out any way you want. In this book, they happen to be sorted out by type, so that it's easier to get to the different types. But you're going to put your whole, uh, all the cards that you have in this book. Now that's fantastic. 
And uh, by the way, I'm going to be letting my biases show through here in the walkthrough. Sorry. But that's fantastic because that means you can use any cards you want. You don't have to shuffle your deck. Uh, you just go through and you're going to be picking them. Now, how does the game itself work? Here's a mage board. Each mage will get one of these and you'll put one marker on your channeling. That's how much mana you're going to get each round. And then you'll start with 10 mana, but that's going to fluctuate your mana that you'll use to cast spells over the course of the game. You're going to put one marker on your maximum life and then one marker on damage. And as you take damage, that's going to increase and it's possible that your maximum life will go up or down over the course of the game. And if these two cubes meet, well then you're dead. And that's the goal of this game is to destroy your opponent's mage. You see a nice stone image, which is part of the board here. This is the board for the full-size game of Mage Wars. And what's going to happen in this game is each mage in a two-player game and a four-player game, they'd start in all four corners, but each mage is going to start in one corner. These mages are going to have two counters put on top of them. They're going to have a quick cast counter, and then they're going to have just another action counter placed on them. And so each mage is going to have that. You're also also going to have a whole bunch of other pieces that are going to be in the game, uh, but the most notable of these pieces are dice. You'll have dice here, and all these dice are six-sided. They have one and two on two of the sides, and they also have a one and a two with a starburst symbol. The other two sides are blank. And you'll also be using a 12-sided die quite a bit, and then there's a whole bunch of damage counters and other counters that you'll be using. Now. One player gets the initiative and it will go back and forth uh, each turn. One player goes first and then the other player goes first. And I'm not going to explain every rule in the game, but basically what you'll do is you will flip through your book at the be beginning of each turn. You're going to get mana equal to your channeling. So the more channeling, the more mana you get per turn. But you're going to go through your book and you're going to pick two cards out of that book. And you're going to place those two cards out in front of you. And those are cards that you can summon that turn or cast that turn. Now, as the game will progress, you're gonna be able to use anybody you have on the board and take an action with those people. Most of the actions you'll take, every turn of course, you'll take one with your mage. A mage has a quick cast token, which allows them to do a quick spell. They can even do that before anything else happens. And then they have a full action that they can use. Now, full actions can include moving and taking a quick action or just not moving at all and taking a full action. And different cards will have different abilities added to them. As the game progresses, you will likely summon different creatures to the board. And as these creatures come to the board, and they're often, they'll be summoned wherever your summoner is, they'll also get an action token on them and they'll be able to take actions. Usually, their actions will be move one and attack or move two and don't attack. Now in this case, this guy's a slow, so he can't move and attack. He can move or attack. But they have different abilities. They have different life points and such. But as you get more and more, you're trying to make these creatures attack the uh, your opponent. You also can attack him directly with your mage. Or you can shoot spells at him. There's different ways. But your whole goal is to knock his life point out so he dies, in which case you win. Now I'm going to show you some cards here from a deck that I threw together. This is for the wizard. And each of these uh, cards, I'm going to show you some of the different types. These are some examples of some of the spells you can cast. Up in the top corner here, it will show you how much mana that spell will cast. And the better the spell is, obviously, the more mana it will cost. There's a little range at the top, so it shows where that spell, how far it goes. Like this one's 0 to 2, and it's, it's cast by your mage, so it can be cast on your mage or up to two spaces away. And I can then, this is equipment, and each thing, different equipment has different abilities. For example, this lightning ring gives me extra damage when I use lightning spells. It's elemental, here's an elemental wand, here's armor that adds two to my armor, uh, and also makes me more resistant to flame. And here's an arcade ring that only can be equipped by the wizard. There are some very specific uh, items and equipment, but there's a lot that can go with anybody. Uh, and then here's other things that I can cast on the board. This is a spawn point where more of my creatures that I summon can come out of. Here's a wall. A wall can be placed between two different spots in the board, causing blocking for people to come in. Here's one of the major cards of the game, and these are called enchantments, and you can just basically throw these on different people. This one, you're, you can play it on a target. Their next attack is unavoidable, which means it can't be dodged. 
Uh, then we have creatures in your deck. So here's an angel of light. Look how expensive she is. 21 mana to cast her, but she rolls five dice when attacking. She has 14 life and one armor. She has all these special abilities too at the bottom. They all mean different things. Just for example here, AGS1 means the opponent rolls one less attack die when attacking her. Flying means she can only be attacked by flying creatures or by range. Legendary means you can only have one of her on the table at a time because, well, there's only one of Samandriel Angel of Light. And Light Immunity means just that. She's immune to light. And there's a couple other things that it will mention that you have on the card, but for the most part, each of these creatures, as you summon them, like this, this Hydra, I showed you this earlier, which is can attack at four or can attack for three, a triple attack. But you'll see here, there's a lot of icons on all these cards, and they're on the spells too. You'll see that little half lightning bolt here. That's a quick act, that's a, that's a quick cast or a quick action. You can take one of those and move. While you see the full action, you can't move. So the Hydra, if he attacks, if he moves and and if he attacks him with a quick action, it's only he's gonna roll four dice and it's a counter strike but if he doesn't do anything else and all he does is his triple strike he can roll three dice three times and there's and he also has regenerate two which means he gets two life point back he's slow which is a negative but there's all sorts of different special abilities and things that your people can have here's a dark friend bat here's more of these different enchantments that you can cast on your opponent these single use then we have some very interesting cards that you can play on a creature or on a summoner and it will tell you who you can play it on. And each of these has a casting cost, which is two. And when you put that on the card, you'll put it face down. And later on when you want to, or sometimes you have to, you pay the revealed cost here, which is four, to show that card. So for example, I can play uh, Jinx on a creature so that when they cast a uh, quick spell, something will happen. And I have several of those in my deck here. Uh, a Circle of Lightning, this gives a creature a damage barrier. And there's all sorts of different things that you can give to creatures to give them extra armor or attack dice. Then there are straight up spells that you can play. Here's Chain Lightning and Electrify and a Jet Stream and a Lightning Bolt and a Thunderbolt. And these are cards that you're just going to play as a single attack against your opponent. And then there's a few other things in the game. Mana Crystals to increase my channeling to get me more mana. And I'm only showing you a few things that are in this deck in particular, the one I threw together. But there are plenty of cards and plenty more cards coming so that you'll be able to build your deck. And so that's essentially how the game works. And you say, well, that doesn't sound that complicated. Well, it's not. But what's going to happen is you're going to, be, you're going to decide what to do. Are you going to take your mage and just run it at your opponent? With the warlock, you might because he's the toughest guy. But at the same time, how are you going to use your creatures? Are you going to send your creatures out? Are you going to spend some time in your corner building up creatures and building up defensive spells and putting walls into place and building up mana? Or are you going to try to rush the opponent? Or are you going to shoot spells at them? All that has to do with your deck. And so you're able to cast up to two spells each turn. All your creatures on the board will move and take actions. And then they will attack one another. And by the way, let me quick talk about attacking. It's you're done with these dice. When you attack, you'll see how much damage you do to your opponent. So let's say this is what I rolled. I would do three damage. The numbers that are not in Starburst have an, ability, have an option to be blocked by armor. So if my opponent had one armor, they would be able to block one of these. And I would do one and one damage, so it'd be two damage total. If my opponent had two armor, I would do one damage. If my opponent had three armor, I would still do one damage because in the Starburst, it will always attack your opponent. And so it's, uh, attacking is very simple and you're never really sure what's going to happen as you attack one another with these dice. A 12-sided die is sometimes used to dodge attacks. Uh, sometimes other things will happen. Creatures can be stunned uh, or incapacitated in some manner or fashion. But that's how the game is played. All right, well, what do we think of this game? Okay, there's a lot going on in this game. Uh, I think the first thing we can say is that the game is fairly complex would be a, a I, I wouldn't say it's complex but it's not something that you can just sit down and go boom with once you know what you're doing but there is a decent amount of rules and things going on it's not lighthearted, but it's not complex either I, complexity I, I guess means that it's harder to play than other games and I don't think it's harder to play than other games however I think there's a lot of there is a lot of reading in the game on the, on the cards that you have to do um, so it's not lighthearted, but it's not complex. 
Yeah, now, uh, this is a game that I would say, I think it's on the same complexity level as Magic the Gathering. Yeah. There's a lot of things going on. When your opponent plays a card, you say, oh, what does that do? And you go back and forth. It's not like you're going to know his deck and he'll know yours. But let's talk about the deck thing. Now, I don't know about Sam, but for me, deck building is something I love to do. I love building decks. When we used to play all the CCGs, I spent tons of time just building decks. And you can do the same thing here. Yeah. And I like how you basically can put any card you want in your deck. You may pay dearly to put it in your deck, mm -hmm. but it's not but but it's possible. Yeah. So if I want to play, you know, the the healer deck and I want to have a gigantic raging demon in the middle of it, or I want to play a guy with all fire attacks and put some ice stuff in there for the fun of it, I can. Yeah. And the, the thing about this game that it's completely unique that no other game has is the fact that all those cards are available to you the whole game. And when I have talked about Magic the Gathering in the past, that was by far my biggest annoyance with that game is that you could make this cool deck and then you never got the cards in it because you're only drawing one card per turn. Mm -hmm. And this game completely does away with that. If you make a combo in this game, you can do it. Yeah. You can do anything you want. You might lose. You might, you might feel like maybe I shouldn't play that spell at this point. But if you really want to summon that gigantic creature, you can. Yeah. Nothing is going to stop you. Absolutely. Yeah, one of the things that, and, and that's one of the things I liked about it right off the bat. When I played it at Origins last year, um, that's what I liked about it right out of the gate was the fact that, wow, I have my entire deck right in front of me. I don't have to wait for that precious card to come up. Uh, I don't have to wait for that combo to be ready for me to use. Uh, it's, it's all available right there. You just have to make sure you have enough mana to do it. I also like the fact that even though you know all the cards in your deck, you don't know what your opponent's playing when he sticks a card underneath his guy. So there's a lot of, oh, what did he do? What's he about to do? And then no matter what happens, there's dice. Yep. And these are really neat dice, I think, because you can have the biggest armor in the world and you can roll a whole bunch of those armor-piercing rolls yeah. and it doesn't matter. Right. And if you're bad at rolling dice like me... <laughs> You can get your butt kicked. Well, what do you think about the diversity between the different the different kinds of uh, mages? Well, I think, um, I, I, you know, this screams expansions, um, but, you know, whether they actually do it or not, maybe he has the inside track on that. Uh, the first four mages that you have are, are pretty much the basic fantasy type mages. You've got the evil warlock, the, um, you know, the shady magician, the holy priestess, and then the... <laughs> Uh, the uh, Beastmaster, the, the Woodsman, the Wood Elf. So uh, I, I like those. They're generic, I think, but th I think they did well in capturing the different abilities. I really thought about this. There's, there's four guys in this, and I think they're, they're, very, they're fairly different. But really, my deck, that, uh, let's say right here I built a wizard deck. I'm pretty sure that nobody else in the world will build this exact same deck that I built. So my wizard is a little bit different than your wizard because I put, for example, I put an angel in my deck. Why? Just because I could. <laughs> you know, and I, I did a lot of other things that would work with the wizard, but I, but I like that. Um, and so if, for example, no expansions ever came out, Mm -hmm. This would st you are getting a ton of game in this box. Yeah, I mean a ton. Now you can buy the, the there's a little box uh, that you can buy right now called the Core Spell Tome, and this just has 110 copies of the most useful spells. So if you want extra spells and yeah. certain ones, you, you know you can do that. It's the most useful spells that somebody else thought of, not not necessarily what you think might be the. <laughs> Well, no, but we agree that there are some spells yeah, like some spells dispel. You, really have have uh, right. you know, yeah. getting there, there's some things you better have. Right. Um, the the game itself is a when you when you play full up. I think it would take 90 minutes. That that's my guess. Once everyone knows what they're doing, the, your first time through the full game will probably take two hours or so. Uh, I we will give the caveat that we have not yet played multiplayer games. I'm almost afraid to play them because I mm. fear that they would take longer yeah. and be a bit more chaotic. Right. Uh, it's possible to do that. In fact, you cannot do that though with the base game. You need to get two copies to play multiplayer. But. Um, well, I guess you could play smaller decks and, and play with them. But uh, I really like it as a two-player game. Yeah. I think I'd prefer it to stay that way. Yeah. It kind of scratches the same itch as Summoner Wars. We're going to talk about that in a different in a different video, I think, where we're going to put them together and do pros and cons on both. And we'll see who comes out on top. 
but uh, it, it kind of, that's where I'm at right now. It kind of scratches the same itch. It has different nuances. It has different uh, things that you can do uh, that Summon Awards doesn't do, but it's very similar, I'll put it that way, to Summon Awards. I think it's it's closer, actually, to me, to Magic the Gathering. I think it has some things in Summon Awards in it, but I think that the... The idea of summoning creatures on the board is very similar to Magic the Gathering and the colors, how they feel different, and spells. But then once they're on the board, they have a tactical maneuvering. In fact, I would say, heresy I know, that this game might replace Magic the Gathering for me. Which, I mean, you're not a very big Magic the Gathering. No, I'm not. I, I like playing it a lot, but I like this better because, one, I love dice, and two, I like tactical maneuvering. Mm -hmm. This is basically Magic the Gathering plus those two things. Yeah, but did, isn't that what Summoner Wars brought to it? It brought to it that that tactical maneuvering aspect. Well, right, but Summoner Wars also didn't have the deck building aspect and the complete customization that this does. But it does now, right? Well, it's getting there. Yeah. Now, how how balanced is everything? It seems balanced. I can't tell you. I mean, it's obviously some creatures are more powerful than others, right. but there's nothing that cannot be taken down. You you know, you might have that awesome piece of equipment and your opponent said, I just melted it away. You build that big spell and your opponent said, this spell. Right. You know, there's all sorts of things. So I would be curious to see what the stats are, but uh, I'm just going to, the, the artwork, the component quality, I think it's, a, the, the board is just really good looking. Mm -hmm. I'm very impressed. It's just a bunch of stones, but I, I like how it looks. And the artwork I think is very good. Well, it's more than just a bunch of stones. There's different, you know, there's blood smears here <laughs> there's and there. There's a dead guy there's over a dead here. Guy over there. There's a skeleton <laughs> over here. There's a shield over there. So, I mean, they did put some forethought. They, they, were, they weren't, I mean, it looks like a battle arena. It doesn't look just like a, you know, somebody's porch or something like that. So, um, I, I think... They did a great job with artwork. The artwork on the cards is phenomenal. Um, the spell books are very cool. Uh, how you know they're they're made of a, a durable kind of material and uh, they're well put together. Some of the uh, card inserts are backwards, but that's a minor quibble. You can get along with that. No big deal. Um, so. I think you're getting your money's worth here. Oh yeah, uh, by far. Uh, I think it's a good production value uh, for the price. So, um, which is what? I don't know. I think it's like sixty bucks right now or so. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> but <Neither> did I? <laughs> but here's the here's the deal, folks. Um, this game is one of my favorite games I think that I've ever played. Uh, it's certainly one of my favorite games that's come out this year. I know that because when I'm done with a game, I will go do something else and I'll sit there thinking, ah, oh. and the whole time I'm playing a game, I'm thinking, oh, I should take that spell out of the book and put this spell in. I, the whole time I'm thinking about the next match, what cards I'll do, what I should have done differently. I remember the match. Oh, I, I attacked him with this. It has a story behind it. I, I, and there can be some really epic moments in a match. To me, this is just phenomenally fun, especially with that clarion call uh addictive call of expansions like i know they're coming out with a necromancer and an elementalist and oh you know that's just very exciting hmm. so this one gets uh three three cards up three cards up i don't know i, I well <laughs> what i can up that <laughs> well that's my deck sir i'm just saying um i'll definitely give this the highest ranking I can possibly give it. Yeah. Um, I, I'll, I'll not do the thumbs or anything like this. Um, well, are you, really, you're going to give it a perfect 10? See, for me, it's still floating underneath I'll, the I'll perfect 10. A, I have to I'll, give a game I'll, a little bit longer. I'll give it a 9. A 9? I'll give it a 9. I, I don't think I would ever turn this game down. Um, what I always recommend it, though, which is what I think the 10 stands for, is that right? You always recommend it, you always want to play it? I think it could easily become one of my 10s. Yeah. I think maybe. that's very possible. So I'm just afraid to give a game that out of the bat, but this is definitely a 9.5. Okay, yeah. I'll give it a strong 9 then. Um, I didn't necessarily like it as much. I, I'm I, I, I'm kind of a sucker for dice rolling because I love dice rolling, but I really, I'm really not good at it. Um, <laughs> the dice guys do not smile down upon me. As someone um, likes math, I would argue, but he's right. Yes. <laughs> he really rolls poorly. I, I, I don't roll poorly. I, I, I roll very poorly. So anyway, uh, that's the only thing I felt like it kind of took some of the control out of my hands, but that's okay uh, with a game like this, and, and I, I completely enjoyed it. All right, well, it's coming out. Uh, the, I know they have some at Gen Con, and then it, the big release will be at the beginning of September, so I get it. Get it, get it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. 
Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.